Welcome back to another cool tool show and tell. Today my guest is Ryan Jenkins. Ryan is a constructionist educator who explores ways for learners to engage with science, art, and technology. He's a co-founder of Wonderful Idea Co., a design studio that builds playful exhibits and leads professional development workshops and develops new prototypes. Ryan, thanks for joining me today. Hey, Donald. How are you? Good. I'm doing all right. Uh, what did you bring to show us? Cool. So I brought um, a small microcontroller called the Microbit um, that we've been using in a lot of our creative coding experiments, doing workshops both with kids and adults. All right. And I've seen this before. I have to admit, uh, I'm, I'm kind of a hoarder when it comes to boards. I've got Raspberry Pi, so I've got like, like all these different flavors of Arduino around, but I haven't yet picked up the Microbit, even though I've heard so much about it. Um, Convince me why I should be picking one of these up. Cool. So um, at Wonderful Idea Co., we're all about doing workshops that allow kids to um, quickly become engaged with art and science and technology. And I think the um, low threshold uh, nature of this board is one of its best qualities. So the idea is that um, this allows you to do the same sort of thing that an Arduino does. You can control inputs and outputs in the real world. So you can connect this board to things like motors or LEDs um, and also switches and sensors. But to me, what gives this, uh, it, what makes this a really low threshold tool for experimenting is the fact that there's a lot of things already built into the board. So uh, there's an LED screen mm -hmm. uh, right on the front so you can start to immediately get feedback about what you're doing. Um, there's two small buttons so you can immediately start to have um, uh, inputs without having to worry about small wires and breadboards. Um, this board also has an uh, accelerometer and a compass on it, so you can right away start um, moving the board and then affecting something else in the real world. Yeah, that, that, that has been the compelling point to me too, is like the, the button controls, um, that so much of that, the interface is kind of friendly and familiar for kids to kind of see a little grid of LEDs and all that they could put a little smiley face on or animation or a blink or something. And then they also have the little thumb controls. Um, talk to me about coding this board. Cause I think that's the other unique aspect for beginners. Am I right? Yeah. So there's different ways of uploading code onto the board. The two that we most use with learners are, uh, one that's called Make Code, which is developed by Microsoft specifically for this board. And what that allows you to do is use a visual block-based programming language to um, create code and upload it onto the board. Um, what that also allows you to do is uh, unplug the board and power it with either like a AA, a AAA battery pack. Um, we've also been experimenting with these um, like a lithium ion battery, mm -hmm. but then you can take your board away from the computer and have the code already uploaded onto it. Um, we've also been experimenting with scratch uh, based coding that you can connect the micro bit to. Um, and that also is a really interesting and nice way to code and program the board. Um, it connects to the board over Bluetooth. Um, so in real time, you can make changes with the blocks on the screen and see what happens on the board. So it's a little bit different because you can't then take away the micro bit and embed it into a project um, away from the computer, but it allows for a little bit more prototyping and iterating because you can um, see the effects of the changes of your code right away. Thinking about the scratch coding just made me uh, remember uh, another really interesting aspect of this board is that they do have Bluetooth um, connection already built in. So you can have two boards and have them talk to each other uh, very easily. So you could have, uh, for example, in our summer camp, we had kids make um, their own types of projects. So some made um, programmable boats or uh, cardboard characters or uh, vehicles, and you can very easily have one uh, board be the controller and the other board be the um, embedded in in the car or the boat or the um, machine and have them communicate so the input of one affects the output of the other. And, and for us, what's really interesting is this intersection between the physical world and the digital world. So when we're doing these uh, experiments, 
engaging kids with technology, um, we'd like them to be kind of seamlessly moving back and forth between adjusting, typing, adjusting the code on the computer, building with cardboard or wood or tools. And I think any tool that allows you to um, quickly embed a microcontroller, embed digital um, capabilities into your physical projects and do that as easily as possible really allows kids to think differently and get excited about um, how they can connect, let's say, the, the physical world to the uh, computational world. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the, um, the other aspect of these boards, I, 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 you might have mentioned this already, but just to to put it out there too, is the the ability to get them connected with alligator clips, right? They have those holes yep. in them so that you can clip onto them. Yeah, exactly. So again, I mean, a lot of times when we're working with these activities, we're thinking about, um, let's say, failure or frustration as a really an integral part of learning. But to me, um, the, the frustration or the challenging moments that really matter are the ones that are based on trying to accomplish your own ideas. So I see with um, a lot of other boards with an Arduino, for example, it has a lot of capability, but there's a lot of frustration about using tiny wires and um, inserting them into the breadboard and getting everything just lined up exactly right. right. And so um, to me, that's not so productive frustration because it's not really based on the your own idea or your own project. So if you are just really quickly able to um, attach the alligator clips to this board, instead of worrying about all these other tiny parts, you can devote your energy to really making the project work the way you want it to or really iterate or prototype to get that design um, expressing the idea in your mind into what's happening in the real world. Yeah, cool. And then the other part of that, that pin design down at the bottom too, is almost like what I, I think of as like the Nintendo cartridge design, right? Where they're the kind of these contact points that can slot into other, uh, you know, um, trying to like expansion boards and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. So it, again, like one of the qualities of tinkering that, um, some of our mentors like Mitchell Resnick and Eric Rosenbaum talk about and Seymour Papert is this idea of the low threshold part of this that I already talked about, but also the high ceiling. So the fact that, um, you can actually go pretty deep with these sorts of boards. And the Bluetooth capability is one of that, but also, I don't know if it's easy to see on my screen, but there's um, four, the three pins that are easily acceptable with alligator clips, but um, I don't think the light's hitting it right, but there's, I think, 16 other pins that are available to you if you plug this into another board or, a, or an adapter. So, you know, there's something very easy right away. You can just get a light and a sensor connected. But if you want to do a really complex uh, robotics project, you can uh, use this same board and have like 16 different um, inputs and outputs connected to it. Great. Well, that was that was an awesome introduction. You've convinced me I need to add it to my collection of, of boards <laughs> well, here around the studio and start playing with it. And, and just as a last thing, something that you talked about in the beginning that I think um, is also a point towards this board is just the fact that there are so many different, um, you know, microcontrollers or uh, chips available. And for educators, a lot of times, um, just the fact that a lot of other people, a lot of other teachers, a lot of other educators are trying this board and sharing their projects putting photos and videos of that online, that's also a big um, uh, plus yeah. for this board. So I think there's a bit of a cycle where the more teachers and educators are sharing what they're doing and sharing these projects, um, kind of the deeper it gets. And I get so much inspiration just from seeing on online or on Twitter or on people's blogs, all the different uh, types of things that they're using the micro bit for. That's a, that's a big part of it because there's a lot of boards out there that are kind of aiming for this market but the ones that have the community uh, really exactly. can get the momentum going. And I think also the, the compatibility with the, the hardware that's out there, right? It sounds like with the, the free Make code, code website that you go to to program these things, I, I would imagine that that makes it broadly compatible with whatever kind of computers you or teachers have around to be able to, to make these lessons work. Yeah, and, and in addition, just that 
um, you can use a wide variety, you know, because there's alligator clip connectors, you can use a variety of extra parts of loose LEDs, of bulk motors. Um, we often do a dissection of a singing and dancing mechanical toy, and you can connect those motors or those parts to this. So I like that fact that it really is endlessly expandable and there's so much wide possibilities for um, the types of things you can connect to this board. You don't need um, you know, a specific part or a specific component to build into the set. You really can create your own toolkit using this as the, as the center or the brain for the projects. Right. And we really haven't mentioned price yet. Uh, the link you sent me is more of a kit that has the micro bit and some uh, battery holder and a USB cable all for around $16.50, $17. Uh, is that typical or are there places where you can get better better deals? Um, that's, that's about typical. Um, you can get a bit of a better deal if you buy it. There's um, something like a classroom pack or a club pack. So I think if you buy 10 of them all at the same time, maybe they're a couple dollars cheaper. But I think around $15 is seems about average to me. But again, that also is a bit um, less than some other boards, um, a bit less than maybe the most standard Arduino or um, other kits. So I do think that price is always an issue, especially when you're thinking about a classroom environment. And, you know, for us, maybe it's important to have one board for every two kids. So, you know, people can work as a team, but still have enough that they're um, able to express their own ideas. So the price definitely also plays into it that it is um, more affordable as a classroom uh, tool. Great. All right. Well, Ryan, where can people find out more about uh, you and uh, Wonderful Idea Co.? Cool. So you can go on our website, uh, wonderfulidea.co. Um, also, we're always sharing things on Twitter, um, at Wonderful Idea Co. And we love just to share our process. So we do a lot of projects and programs with, with kids, uh, professional development workshops for teachers, um, different residencies at museums and maker spaces. And we're always sharing uh, what we're doing, but also the process behind it. So um, it'd be great if people could see... Uh, check out our website, but also uh, share what they're doing so we can kind of keep the inspiration circle uh, going. Absolutely. All right, everybody, go check out what Ryan and Wonderful Idea Co. are doing. And Ryan, thank you so much for joining me today and talking to me about the micro bit. Cool. Thanks, Donald. Good talking with you.